Hello, my name is Vaikunthan Rajaratnam. In this talk, I'm going to look at the opportunities that are available to perform educational research in the clinical setting for healthcare professionals. Good research begins with a problem. Identify what is your problem that you have in your work environment. All of us are faculty in one way or the other, as we are involved in teaching of our learners in the clinical environment. And when we have a problem, be it a clinical situation, in the management or performance, there's usually an educational component that can help resolve the problem. When looking for research problems in the workplace, especially in the clinical environment, one of the models that can be used is the human's performance technology model. In this model, one can analyze a gap in the performance from what is expected and desired and what is actually performed. Measurements can be done in the lack of performance in a particular procedure, and these then can be analyzed to see whether it is a lack of environmental factors like instruments and equipment, or is it due to lack of human performance due to lack of knowledge and skills? These are easily overcome by providing adequate educational strategies to improve the performance and thereby reduce the gap. And this is a useful model in the clinical environment. In developing educational strategies for overcoming problems in the workplace, a model that can be used to develop various instructional materials and programs would be using the various learning theories. For example, if there's a problem is one of skills, psychomotor skills that are required to perform, then the use of the behaviorist model of learning can be utilized to design instructional materials that can be implemented to improve the skill sets and thereby improve problems and solve our research problem. When considering educational programs, there are three domains or pillars that form any educational program. They are the curriculum, the pedagogy, and the assessment. These are the three areas that we can use to analyze the types of educational strategy that we're going to use to bring about a change in performance due to the problems that we have in the clinical environment. The type of curriculum that is relevant to achieve the performance desired needs to be analyzed and this can be a research topic in itself or the way the instruction material is delivered uh, either through videos or high fidelity simulation workshops as the pedagogical uh, approach towards the educational program. Assessment is another area that we can do a research on is to do work-based assessment which are relevant in our clinical environment and what are the methods that we're going to use especially in terms of formative assessment and its usefulness. As we're dealing with adults, the type of learning is very different from children and heterogy is a, a term that is used to identify the self-paced on-demand learner. That means letting the learner learn find his curriculum, find his own way of learning and his assessment and produce the results that we are desired. And this can be a model for research on how we're going to improve our performance and overcome our problem in the workplace. Another model is to use the Bloom's taxonomy and this is very useful in seeing how knowledge is acquired and applied in an individual in an educational program. Based on our problem when we have decided on what kind of uh, that educational strategies requ required to overcome the clinical problem that we have with our uh, learners, then we prefer to provide learning materials that would con uh, concentrate on higher order thinking rather than lower order thinking. And this again can form a model through which we can perform research in designing and implementing educational programs and evaluating its effectiveness. So the ability to produce new and original work uh, through constructing and developing and formulating programs in our learners would be a useful method of overcoming our problem as a result of work performance uh, uh, gaps in the clinical environment. To evaluate uh, clinical competence, we use the Miller's pyramid of how one performs at the work. And at the end of the day, uh, work performance gap is, is assessed in the ability of the individual to perform a set task in the work setting rather than in the laboratory. 
and therefore the performance must be integrated into practice and therefore when you can do research based on effective strategies that utilizes the work as a place to evaluate and to educate on performance and this can be an excellent model in uh, designing educational programs and an opportunity to perform research on our strategies to improve performance in the workplace. When we are designing various instructional materials for our education program to resolve our uh, performance gap, the ADDI model, A-D-D-I-E, which is a model for instructional design, is an excellent model to use to design our material for improving performance in the workplace. It consists of analyzing the needs and from which then designing our educational program and then developing the instructional material uh, that is through various forms of educational resources and skill acquisition programs and then implementing it and after the implementation phase is to evaluate its effectiveness in whether seeing the performance gap has been narrowed as a result of this instructional program and this is an excellent model to be used for research in designing instructional material. Gagney's nine events for instructional design is another great model in how we prepare instructional material. And it starts from gaining attention so as to get the individual interested and motivated in undergoing the program to improve his skills and knowledge so as to perform better in the workplace. And making sure that they understand what is required of them through the learning objectives that are clear and st uh, state, clearly stated and also using the prior knowledge and allowing the individual the freedom to move uh, along the program to suit his needs and not force uh, various instructional methods. It must allow the individual to uh, learn new skills and knowledge and provide guidance while he is in his learning journey and provide opportunities for him to elicit performance initially in a safe environment until he's ready to perform in the clinical setting. Providing feedback that is uh, optimum and at the right time and right place helps in reinforcing learning and assessment of performance is crucial so as to ensure that the learner is on the right track. To enhance retention and transfer is to ensure that the individual realizes that this is a real life problem and that he can solve his real life problem in the context of the clinical environment. So why do educational research in the clinical setting? All of us are faculties. We are involved in the teaching of our peers, especially our young, younger clinical colleagues, and therefore we are required in most of our performance management systems for our work to engage in educational activities. And more and more legislative bodies are requiring that clinicians have a component of education in their performance. And therefore, by doing educational research, one is able to fulfill both the educational component in our performance uh, assessment, also the research component. And these become a useful tool in our own career development and educational research is an opportunity for us to kill two birds with one stone which is both our research and educational requirements in our performance management. Thank you and I am happy to receive any feedback from you or any queries in the following email. Goodbye.